uh, in verse 113, the Semach uh, is the uh, title or the subtitle that's there. If you have the Bible that has uh, the chapters in the book of, um, in Psalms 119, they're broken down into chapters. And there's chapters within that chapter, and we're at the 15th chapter of the Psalms 119 as we begin. I'm going to read verse 13. You guys read the even verse, and we'll read down to verse 20. And we're going to try to cover another part of verse 113 and 114. Amen? Uh, verse 113 says this, I hate vain thoughts, but thy law do I love. Depart from me, ye evildoers, for I will keep the commandments of my God. Uphold me according unto my word, that I may live, and let me not be ashamed of my hope. Hold thou me up, and I shall be safe, and I will have respect unto thy statues continually. Thou puttest away all the wicked of the earth like those, therefore I love thy testimonies. My flesh trembleth for fear of thee, and I am afraid of thy judgment. Amen. You may be seated. Y'all didn't remember your assignment was to look at the Ephesians. Oh, yeah. I kind of I ran a little rabbit trail in Ephesians chapter number 3, and we yeah. looked at it. We were supposed to look at verses one uh, three through 14 see and see how many times that are in that particular area there of how many times we are reminded that we are in Christ and what a blessing it is when you think about it uh, in that regard or how many times he's referring to us and what we have in Christ um, if you read it there it is 10 uh, things that are there when it says I am in Christ um, I'm going to just uh, uh, kind of highlight it a little bit tonight when we get into back to the Psalms 113. But we tied that into this particular psalm because when you think about what you have in the Lord, why would you go to anyone else or any other source to get help with you when you're going through things? I don't know of any place you can go, anyone you can go to, or anything that you can do of your own that's going to be a better resource for you no matter what you're going through than it is to God. And we're talking about Psalms 119, God's word for God's people. Because Psalms 119 is speaking about the word of God and how important it was to the psalmist as he continues to write. And so when we took this little rabbit trail, you guys look at it if you're there. Psalms 100, I mean not Psalms, but Ephesians chapter number, number 3 and verse, uh, Ephesians chapter 1. Let me get there because I don't want to mess it up. We'll slow down a little bit here, Pastor White. Uh, Psalms 100, I mean, Ephesians chapter number 1, and we're looking at verses 3 through 14. As we took this rabbit trail, because when you think about what you have in Christ, nothing else can ever take its place. Nothing else can solidify our confidence. Nothing else can replace what he's done for us. As I begin to look at it in verse number 3, you see there in verse, uh, verse number 3, it says, Blessed be the Lord God of our Father, um, am I in it right? right? Ephesians chapter 1, yes, I'm in there. Blessed be the Lord God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who have blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Think about it, in Christ. Look at verse number 4, and it says here, um, uh, yeah, I got down to verse number 4 here, and it says, according as he have chosen us in Christ, us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love it's in christ we are in christ it will be the loved of christ and we're in him and we've been chosen uh, um, uh have chosen us in him before the foundation of the world because what we have in christ look at verse number six um here he says, for the, for, uh, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he have made us acceptable in what? In the beloved. We are beloved. We are in the beloved of, of God in Christ. And it's all referring to him. Look at verse number seven. 
in whom we have redemption through what? His blood, the forgiveness of sin, according to the riches of what? Of his grace. There's nothing that we merit. It's nothing that we do on our own. It's all because of the what? The grace of God is that we have in him, in whom we have it. Look at verse number 9 uh, as we just continue to step down here. Having made known unto us the mysteries of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he have purposed, uh, which, which he have a purpose in himself. So in him, we have all of these things that we see here, having made the mysteries according to his will. You know, nothing is mystifying really in the word of God. If you really get into it and study it, you find some wonderful truths. And we found that out Sunday night. Amen. But he's revealed all of these mysteries to it. Look at verse number 10. Um, he says this, that in, in the dispensation of the fullness of time, he might gather them together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are in earth, even in him. So everything is brought together in heaven and in the earth because it's in Christ that we have. He sums it all up here in verse 10, and really it's all in Christ. Who spoke this world in which we live in, he spoke it into existence. Amen? And we have this in Christ. Um, let me keep going here. In verse number 11, we're almost there. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. Aren't you glad everything is still done according to God's will? Amen. 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 It's done still according to his will. And, and let me say this as we're here tonight. You know, we can get everything like the, one of my pastors used to say when in general. We can get everything all bolly foxed up. We can, all, we can mess it all up. And God can still turn that right around and receive the praise, the honor, and the glory of it, even when we make mistakes. Amen? Amen. Aren't you glad he's just that kind of God? It doesn't deter away from what God wants to do. This world has nothing to offer us. Look at verse number 12 uh, here. And that we should be to the praise of his glory. Let me read that again. That we, what? Should be to what? Of what? of his glory wow who first trusted in christ if you trusted in christ everything about you should be to his praise and to his glory boy that's a wonderful god that we have amen gives us salvation and everything that's going to be done in your life and mine should be to his praise and to his glory uh let's keep on going here verse 13 in whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Boy, you can't get no better than that. Amen? He sealed you. Nothing can harm you. Nothing can destroy you. Nothing can bring any destruction to you, spiritually speaking, because you're sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise. And when we think about it, and we probably heard this phrase many a time, that when you got saved, God sealed you. Amen. Made you his own and sealed you with the greatest possession you could ever be sealed in, and that is the Holy Spirit of promise. Amen. I'm thinking about it tonight because we're from Carolina. And when you preserve something and you seal it and uh, the little mason jars and you put it in there and you seal it up and it just locked that freshness right on in it. Amen. Uh, my neighbor brought me some peaches and he said that's what they're going to do with the ones that he got down there from Annie's apple. Amen. Y'all yeah, tell you, Pastor, you go to food all the time, amen. But anyhow, <laughs> when you take that seal off that, that jar when it's been sealed, it, oh, and that freshness is still in there. And God has sealed us when you think about it. Uh, let's see, this is the 10th one, uh, the 10th time, 10th, uh, and then we find that in verse 13 as well as we're talking about it. Uh, time we are told, we, uh, uh, all of these times that we're told as we're sealed, there's 10 times here that he's talking about that, that we are in Christ. That's what we have. So when we go back to the Psalms 119, let me just try to highlight a few things that we talked about this Samach uh, as it means uh, here in this 15th chapter in Psalms 119, that word that's over in the inscription that's in your Bible, if you have a red letter Bible, is Samach. A Samach is this word here, has the idea 
in this particular area that the psalm is talking about to sustain, to uphold, to rely upon, to strengthen. That is what that area, that word means when you think about it as he's breaking it down into the alphabets of the of, of, of here that he's breaking it down to the to the uh, to the alphabet here that he's talking about in the in this particular area of the scriptures. That's what it means. Because if you think about it, aren't you glad that God is our what? Sustainer. He upholds us. He we can rely upon him. Aren't you glad you can do that tonight? And he is our strength. Let me say this tonight. How many of y'all um, remember growing up and your parents always, there was somebody that you hung around with that your parents weren't happy that you were associating with? I know Dirk has some. He was the one that nobody wanted their kids to hang around with. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but do y'all remember that when your parents, you know, you growing up, there was always a group or a crowd or somebody that they did not want you to be around. Why would they not want you to be around those people or that person? For your safety. Huh? For your safety? It could be for your safety. What else? Influence. Huh? Influence. 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 That was the real reason that your parents did not want you to be around those that would be a bad influence on you. Let me give you a scripture tonight because what we're going to talk about a little bit tonight here, it tells us, and you can write this one down. You ought to take it to heart. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 32, 33 says this, Be not deceived, evil communication corrupts good manners. That's why your parents did not want you to be around certain people because you're going to be influenced by them. Amen? 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 So they didn't want you to do that. And here's the same thought here I want to, 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 to bring home tonight is God is the same way towards you and I when it comes to evil doers. And that's why he says in verse number 13, 113, that's why he's telling us tonight, he says, I hate vain thoughts, but, they, but thy law do I love. And last week, you remember we talked about how he said he hated vain thoughts because what he's saying here to us, that he did not want to be around those kind of people that were wishy-washy, they were not good influence because they were wishy-washy. And, so, and James 1.8 tells us this about those kind of persons is, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. A double-minded person or is unstable. He talks like a Christian when he's among Christians, but when he's among worldliness and worldly people, he talks sinfully like they do. And that's why he's saying he hated vain thoughts because those people that are like that are always saying something. One thing, as we talked about it last week, we talked about even homosexuality or we talk about abortion. Whenever they are around those people, and we're talking about politicians because those are the number ones that are like that, and we have people that are like that as well that say that they're Christian. As long as he's talking to those that are against abortion, he's okay with them. And then when he goes over to this other crowd that are, that are for it, he's over there, He's agreeing with them because what does he want? He wants their votes. Amen? Amen. And so what the psalmist is saying that a, a corrupt communication will do the same thing to you because if you don't stand for something, as we said last week, you're going to fall for anything. And that's why he says he hates vain thoughts. And that's why it's so important for you and I to be around good, godly people that are influential to us because we want that good behavior to rub off on us, to help us to be what God wants us to be. And when we're around people that are not like that, you know what happens? We're going to become like them, or they're going to become like us. Amen? Amen? So he hates them. And hate is a strong word. But when it comes to sin, God hates what? God hates sin. And we talked about it last week. We still got to love the sinner, but we got to hate the what? Yeah. We got to hate the sin. We got to stand for what's wrong in our nation. We got to stand what's wrong in our society, in our homes, in our families. We got to stand for what's right and what's true. Because if we want God's blessings, we got to take a stand. Amen? Amen. And the psalmist is saying it's about the word of God and how it ought to be that way. Uh, if you go back to Psalms 118, uh, go back there. Who can tell me what Psalms 118 in verse 8 is? Is 
It is what? It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. Let me say this about this particular verse. Do you know that this verse is smack dead dab middle in the entire Bible? It is one of the most powerful verses if you search it out and read and think about what it says. It is, it is, it is more, it is better for you to, and I to trust in who? The Lord. the Lord. Instead of who? Man. Man can't do anything for you. Huh? I found it circled. You gotta circle it. Let's not just circle it, live it. Because that's what we need to do. And it's the wonderful thing that you're doing it, Kathy. But that's where that verse is. When you think about it, trusting in God because man will let you down. Let me say this, because man can tell you one thing, say one thing, and do another. Um, <clears throat> when Daniel and you were courting, <clears throat> is he still living up to all that he used to tell you? Yes. No, just kidding. <laughs> but we know that that can happen, amen? And, and mom and dad did not want you to be around those kind of people that would be that way. Corrupt communication is not going to be a good influence on you in your life. And it's the same way with God, and the psalmist is reminding us of it. Amen. Isn't this some wonderful things tonight when you really think about it? Uh, he, he, he says a double-minded person is unstable in all, all their ways. They mixed up in what they believe. They mixed up in what they say. And he's telling us that we ought to stay away from them. Uh, you cannot trust him, or you cannot trust them. He can lie, or tell the he can lie, or tell the truth. But who knows when he is doing which one? Mm -hmm. You know, we've heard this old saying about Abe Lincoln said this: "Say you can tell a lie, <clears throat> and then you got to tell another lie to cover that lie, and then you got to tell another lie to cover that lie because you got to cover that lie that you told <laughs> that you told that lie." And then you tell another, you cover that lie, and you don't know where the truth is, so you don't even know where the lie is. Mm -hmm. And you forget where the truth is because that person is just telling you a lie, and you don't know. But you know what the psalmist said? He loves thy word is because God's word is true. Amen. There's no deceitfulness in it, and there's no lies in it. It says what it says, and it means what it says, and it'll always be that way. And isn't it wonderful that the psalmist is taking that kind of stand and he's reminding us tonight that we need to take that same kind of stance when it comes to the word of God. Folks, you cannot beat it with a, what I said, beat it with a stick. That's what we used to say in Carolina. You can't beat it with a stick. Amen. There, we used to take that old tobacco, tobacco stick and, and drive a nail in it and take that old wheel off of that wagon when it's done wore out and we put that stick on it and we thought we could beat anything with that stick and just push it down. <laughs> Where did that come from? I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> but amen. But it, but you can't. You can't think about. It. But he's he's defining this thought here with us in verse one thirteen. But he's also talking about the defilement of it, cause it's vain thoughts that they have. As a man thinketh in his heart, Proverbs twenty three seven says this. As a man thinketh in his heart, what? So is he. So what's in your heart is gonna come out. For it's out of the abundance of the heart, the what? The mouth speaks. If it speaks long enough, what's in your heart is going to come out. There's no ifs, ands, buts about it. So therefore, evil thoughts from whom you, uh, uh, from your character, whether you realize it or not, it, it, and the times will come when you will do what you've been thinking about. If you think long enough, you're going to do what you've been thinking about. And I can sit here now and watch all of y'all just starting to think about what y'all thinking about. And before long, y'all going to do it. You're going to go home, and somebody's going to make a banana split that they're talking about. <laughs> Amen. Uh, uh, somebody's going to, Kathy's going to finish prepping for the fish. She's cooking them. I'm just kidding. Amen. But you, you're going to think about it. Bad thoughts will therefore defile your, 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 your with, with bad behavior. Bad thoughts, that's what it do. So he's talking about the, the defiling of it. He's talking about uh, uh, the, 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 um, the defining it as we talked about it. He's talking about the defilement that it brings here in Psalms in verse 113. There's a whole lot here in this verse, isn't it? Uh, when you think about it, let me turn back over here. Psalms one, uh, 119 verse 13. I hate vain thoughts, but thy law do I love. He loves God's word. He's detesting vain thoughts. I hate it. Hate is an evil 
as a very strong dislike for evil, but a very wholesome dislike for evil is what he's talking about here. Um, Proverbs uh, um, um, 29 verse 10 says this, the bloodthirsty hate the upright, but the just seek his soul. You know, we talked, we said it last week that evil people dislike you because you're a Christian. They don't have any problems hating you. Amen. So really, we ought not have any problems hating evil, not that person, but the evil, because evil hates us. Proverbs 29 and verse 27 says this, an unjust man is an abomination to the just. Why? And he that is upright is the, in the way is his abomination to the wicked. So in other words, they dislike us, amen, and the wicked we ought to be an abomination to us because of what they do. So it's vice versa here in this particular verse that we're talking about. If you do not take a strong stand against evil, you, it will defeat you. It will. And again, I say this because if you put yourself in a place where you're all constantly around those that are doing wrong, eventually for you to do what's right, you're either going to have to take a stand against it or you're going to become like that. Amen? Amen. Or oh my, because that's what's going to happen here. So how do we defeat it? He tells us how he defeats this. And really, Paul is saying uh, uh, in Romans 12 and verse 9, I almost skipped over this. I'm going to give you this verse as well. Let love be without dissemination. Uh, hypocrisy is what he's talking about. And he tell us to abhor or to hate that which is evil. Cleave unto that which is good. Romans 12 and verse 9. To love the good means you must despise the evil with a passion. That's exactly what it ought to be like. But to defeat this thought, thy law do I love. And I kind of got ahead of myself a little bit here. If you love the word of God, you will hate evil. If you love the word of God, because it's going to constantly point out things to you that you ought to be doing and things that you ought not be doing. And if it's working the way that it ought to in your heart and in your life, you're going to dislike evil things that go on in the world in which we live and the society in which we live and even in some of the people that you are around. And we got to separate ourselves from them because either we're going to be like them or they're going to be like us. We said it last week, iron sharpened is what? iron and show that it's chopping is what the counsel countenance. countenance of his friend that's what it does amen so David loved hoped in God's word because in verse 14 he says here that he declared thou art my hiding place and my shield I hope in thy word his hope is in thy word. That's what's going to help me. That's what's going to help him when he went through what he was going through. And we know David went through a lot of things in his life. The word of God leads him or led him or leads him to God, to, to, the, to the God of the word, as, and, as he confesses here that thy art my hiding place. Psalms, uh, uh, Psalms 28 and verse 7 says this. It's like a deep cave that you can get in and you can hide yourself in the presence of God. As I read that today, Psalms, you can just turn over to Psalms, one, uh, Psalms 90. Um, when I was growing up, I used to hear the preacher preach, and I never got a whole lot out of what he was saying. But Psalms 190 was a psalm I will never forget, and it had one of the greatest impacts in my life because he, no, 90. He preached that at my grandmother's funeral. funeral. But he that dwelleth in the secret place shall abide in the what? In the shadow of the Almighty. And I remember when he preached that, how important that we got to abide in his shadow you know how close that you are to an object when you're in a shadow? That's where we got to be when it comes to God's word. And he that abided in the secret place shall abide in the shadow 
of the Almighty. You want to get close to God, you got to be within shadow's distance. Amen? And you do that by being in his word. And when Reverend Hart preached that, I, I hadn't been long got saved, and I'll never, I didn't turn over there, and I believe I didn't mess it up, did I? 91, did I say 90? 9112. Okay, I, I want to say, let me turn over there. We're going to we're gonna end there because I see myself some. 91, one? Okay, I guess I better get there. <laughs> uh, 91, what? 91, one. Okay, I thought it was 90, but 91, I should have remembered that. And I turn over there and read it. He that, that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And he spoke that at my grandmother's funeral. And he preached from that. And I'll never forget those words. And maybe I had the reference to it wrong, but I'll never forget that. And what he was saying that was about, that was about my grandmother. That's the person that she was. And y'all heard me say it many a time. My grandma would always say, when everything was going wrong, just put it in the hands of the Lord. She said, just put it in God. No, she said, put it in God's hand. And I told y'all this before. My brother and I had a stepbrother um, in my dad's um, uh, second marriage. Or was it the first? Because my mom is my mother. I don't consider that my dad's first marriage because that's my mom. But my dad's first marriage, I had a stepbrother. And no matter what we did to him, my brother and I, he was younger. We beat him up, <laughs> throw him around, <laughs> toss him around. But you know what? He would always come right back, mm. you know? And, and, and we used to have some issues going on in the two families. And I'd go to my grandma, and I want to complain. And she would always say that, just put it in God's hand. And i look at her. <laughs> she, didn't want to, she didn't slap me because she was just a loving person. And I would say, why do you always say that? Because I wanted her to say something to agree with me. Amen. <laughs> But she told me something that I needed to hear, and that was to do what? Put it in God's hands. There's no better hands than you could have put it in. And I didn't understand that and understood that till I got saved. And I began to walk with the Lord. And I began to hear God's word from a different point of view. Because when you receive the spirit of God, it will reveal the truth to you of the word of God. And you ought to see things different. You ought to desire different things in your life. Because the word of God speaks. And if we're listening, it's going to change our way of thinking. It's going to change our behavior. It's going to change our love for God. And it'll change our love for other people. And when my grandmother says that today, I understood. I understand why she says that. Because whenever she was troubled, she would tell us to put it in God's hand. How many of us here tonight have, have all kind of problems in our families? Don't we? Amen. But you know what you need to do with it? Put it in God's hands. Who can resolve it better than you and I? Put it in God's hands. 90. He that abideth in the shadow of the Almighty. Mm. That's good. And it still helps me today. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I believe that the psalmist, and we're going to get into this next week, that's why he could say that he hated every evil thought. Because those things won't do for you the things that God's word will do for you. Amen? And he had a desire that he wanted that. And in verse number 14, where he says, thou art my hiding place. You know what? And, 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 and my shield. In other words, God is his protection and God is his protector. He's my hiding place. And you know what you can do with that? He can become your refuge. And that's what he wants to be. Amen. He's your protection, and he's your protector. Can you get any better than that? No. So anything that you're going through, he can protect you from the evil, and he's your protector from the evil. 
Amen. And, and, and you have to be the one to decide what you want him to do. But he decides what's best for you. And that's why we have to be receptive of what God does, the way he does it, when he does it, how he does it. And we can have joy. And we can find the laughter that brings us the joy in our hearts. And not to say that it's not a serious matter, but it's a joyful thing when you're trusting in the God of heaven and his word because it's true. And it's not like the wishy-washy people that we can be around. It's, it's not unstable. Amen? And it's not. It's true all the time. It's right all the time. It's rewarding all the time. And it's revealing all the time. You cannot do better than that. And this is what the psalmist is sharing with us. Um, I think I kind of, oh, woo, okay. Amen. So we're going to talk about him being our refuge uh, a little bit next week because he's our hiding place. Uh, and abide in the shadow of the Almighty. Woo, that, is, that, is, that is a wonderful psalm. And like I say, it, it, it just still reigns in my heart tonight uh, as I think about my grandmother. And she would always say, put it in God's hands. And it's still true today with her grandson. And, and I would say this, I was a baby. <laughs> and I was my grandma's favorite. <laughs> Amen? Well, I love her. Father, thank you again for your blessing. God, thank you for the privilege we have tonight to be in your house. And Lord, how this psalms is such a tremendous blessing to the hearts and lives of your people. How God's word is for God's people. And how it can be such a, a blessing and an influence in our lives. It's, un, it's not unstable. It's steady. It's consistent. It's fulfilling with all the promises that can be found in it. We can never exhaust it because you're not an exhausting God. You love us in spite of ourselves, and I'm certainly too uh, thankful for that. I pray your blessings upon this hour. Pray you be with uh, Brother Hall's mother as she travels tomorrow. It's a blessing to have her with us and to enjoy. I'm sure that she brought to her family while she was here. Give her safety to ride back at the appointed place. Again, we love you and thank you for tonight that we can come and be in your house. Uh, pray for Aaron to have many more birthdays. And, Lord, that we can leave here tonight and say that it has been good to be, to have been in the house of the Lord. We love you. We praise you. We thank you for being God. We ask your blessings now in this hour. We ask it in Jesus' name for his sake. Amen.